Now, Jaguar isn't shy in coming forward and saying that the Porsche 911 is right in the crosshairs of its F-Type coupe and convertible. And now, a couple of years in the marketplace, they've expanded the model range to include 14 different variants. The major changes coming this year are all-wheel drive versions and ones with a manual gearbox. And we've come here to Portugal's Estoril circuit to give them their first taste test. The changes are mostly under the skin, with the only modifications to its visual form coming in an aggressive and optional sports body kit. So chief among the changes are the adoption of a six-speed manual gearbox in the V6 and V6S. It's a ZF gearbox and it's the same as that used by BMW in cars such as the 3 Series, 2 Series and M4 and M3 models. But it's been specifically tailored for the F-Type S with unique gear ratios and selectors. So for those that like a little bit more intimacy in their sports car and actually want to use all the torque of that V6 supercharged engine, it is actually a really good gearbox. It's got good ratios and a good action to it. Across all models, Jaguar has also introduced electric power steering for the first time to the F-Type. And I'd have to say, it's actually really good. In the default setting, it feels really natural with a good weight to it. And then in the dynamic mode, where it adds a little bit more to it, but it's not over-assisted. It brings a little bit more feedback and particularly on a racetrack, it's got some great precision to it. Inside, there's not a lot of changes except in the infotainment system. It introduces Jaguar's new updated touchscreen, which brings a whole heap of new functions, including a smartphone app that allows you to remote start the car, check the fuel level, and also navigation instructions. In the data logger, it's got a stopwatch, so if you're on a track, you can get some lap times out of it. And it's also got sensors for the throttle and brake positions, and I'd have to say, it's a much better much classier looking system than the Nissan GDR, which has got all those functions but looks a bit more like a computer game. Also, at the top of the range, Jaguar has deleted the V8S, which only had a 364 kilowatt supercharged V8, and replaced it with the full house R version. So now you can have a 404 kilowatt coupe or a 404 kilowatt convertible. And as for how the all wheel drive system works, well, it's a rear wheel drive car first and foremost. It only sends torque to the front axle when it detects wheel spin at the back. So Jaguar claims it is all about extracting more performance rather than built for snow belt areas like in the US or Scandinavia. On the track, you can certainly feel it working through long corners where you're you know, extracting a massive amount of torque out of the V8 engine in particular and it just sort of brings the car in line at the front. It's you know, really quite invisible in the way that it works. It certainly gets you out of the corners without flinging it into a sideways spin and obviously a lot quicker. The effectiveness of the all-wheel drive system was also proven on a wet handling circuit where it generated significantly more stability through the bends and greater traction under acceleration. gearbox will only be available on the 3 litre supercharged V6 models, while all-wheel drive will be an option on all variants in both the coupe and convertible body styles. The expanded range is due to arrive in Australia from around May, with the manual V6 expected to become the new price leader at around $115,000, while at the opposite end, the range topping V8R convertible will come in above the current V8S at around $210,000. So, has Jaguar succeeded in what it intended to do and closed the gap between the F-Type and the 911? Well, that's a challenge we're going to have to wait until we get back home for. At the moment though, what it has definitely done is broaden the appeal of what is undoubtedly one of the most gorgeous coupes on the market today.